Hey everyone, Mike Taravella here, or Value Add Mike, here today to discuss how to analyze a deal as a passive investor. It's very easy to look at the bottom line of an Excel spreadsheet and go, man, this is how much money I'm going to make, count, count my money, pay the investment, and see how it goes. But it's super critical that you have this fil funnel and filters so that you can make sure that every deal comes, that comes across your desk checks the box. So this is the funnel that we use every single time when looking at a deal. So the first thing that I look at is the market. So I think take a little bit step further and you can look at the 50 states and then you narrow it in as you go. So the market, generally we're looking for states that have population growth. Uh, we're looking for states that have job growth and we're looking for states that have no state income tax. And the no state income tax is a very particular piece because what happens is more businesses are going to go into that market, promote job growth, which then people go where the jobs are. So when looking at the 50 states, we quickly filter the nine, nine or so states that don't have any state income tax. And then for me, geographically being based in Tennessee, you know, there's some, a lot on the West coast, but I focus in on the Southeast. And so the last, those three states are Tennessee, Texas, and Florida. Thoughts on Florida later, but those are a very quick and easy way to go from uh, 50 states down to nine, down to three. Uh, so everyone has their own criteria, but the biggest thing that I'd say for a past investor is super important is making sure you have population growth. Because you have population growth, that means that there's more demand for the rental products in your markets. And when there's more rental demand, you have the ability to increase rents. So population growth is generally the number one indicator uh, for information and whether or not a market is viable. And so I check that data by uh, FRED, Financial Reserve Economic Data, which I can put in the comments and the show notes, and just making sure that we have that increase in population, which then the job growth, et cetera, occurs. The next thing that I look at is the submarket. So the, once I prove out the market is viable, the next thing that I look at is the submarket. Now, the submarket, I, I use one tool, the geomap.ffiec. And what this tool does is allows me to, with any address in the United States, pick a particular tract and see what the estimated median family income is at that level. We generally have, don't look at anything less than 40000 or unless it's a path of progress, because anything less than 40,000 generally means uh, there's rents are affordability is can be an issue in going into these markets. It could be more management intensive. So it's super important that you understand that submarket by seeing that filter, because say if some people, if your resident potential residents are only making 20,000 and your business plans to up increase rents to $2,000, that's not a viable business plan because your residents in that tract can't afford it. So that's the first tool I look at. Uh, generally, like I said, the $40,000 mark works for us. Anything slightly below it will real deeper, do a deeper dive. Uh, but that's a quick, easy tool for free that can allow you to assess markets. Uh, and the best, another tool that, or another thing about the tool I like is that you can click on the surrounding tracks and really get a feel for the area. Another thing that I look at when looking at the submarket is the proximity to jobs and potential jobs in the future. So similar to the market, there's job growth, population growth. The submarket can really tell you what's in for the future. And so last year we purchased a 36 unit. And with that 36 unit, we really liked the area because it had 1.6% population growth. But the biggest thing that really we liked was that in the last six to eight months, there's 2,000 jobs being announced in that area. So there's already a limited restricted supply of rental products and homes being built in the area, but now there's 2,000 jobs being built. So there's all the jobs for people building all of those facilities that needed to be made, but then also the people that are going to become working there full time. And then there's going to be more subsequent businesses that come as well. So it's super important that you go where the jobs are going. And so in the submarket, we really look in the proximity of how close we are to those jobs so that we can be viable rental products. You don't want to be 45 minutes or two hours away from where all the jobs are being built because then it's uh, 
it's too much of a hassle for your residents. And so you can really hone in on that population growth. Uh, the submarket too, the last thing I kind of really look into is the, is the crime rates. And that's just important to make sure that you're in a safe, viable area for your residents to live. Uh, it's, it's important, like I said, the median income help deters it, but crime can happen anywhere. And it's just super important that if there's constantly recurring crime in that community or within that particular submarket, that you avoid it. Um, making sure you call your local police, making sure the sheriff's department, if they, if they have an idea of what's going on in that area and they laugh about it, generally not a good sign. So super important that you understand your submarket. And then another thing too, is just making sure you understand the flood maps in the area because that can really affect your insurance costs later. But we can do that in a different video. Next in the funnel is the property. So generally when I see investors, uh, they're looking for a particular number of units, which I think is very important, but I think also looking at the vintage is very important. So, and when I first started investing, we were looking at 1960s assets, uh, um, and it proved to be a very a great learning lesson because anything in the 19, or later than 1970s, there's risks of breakers going out, your plumbing becomes an issue because galvanized pipes, uh, anything older than that, there could be breaker issues as well. And so there's a lot of functional obsolescence that you need to overcome. And so when you're thinking of a real estate investment, yeah, you could paint the walls, but if there's plumbing or sewage issues, there's a lot more capex and management intensive work that needs to be done. Um, so we've evolved our model to focus on 1970s. It doesn't sound like a huge jump, but 1970s, ideally 1980s and newer because it allows us to not necessarily have to deal with those, that functional obsolescence and really focus in on providing value to our residents by upgrading interiors, providing other services, instead of having to update mechanical, update plumbing, update uh, roofs. So it's just super important when you're looking at your property, have the vintage, have your unit count, um, and really just hone in on that because the older the property, the more time and money you're gonna spend working on it and, and no spreadsheet can account for that. It just, it just a lot of years of experience that can really assess it. So, and one thing too, uh, the plum, water can ruin a lot, a lot of uh, profitability. So, and then in the finances, last but not least, as you can see, we didn't look at any numbers until we started looking at until this point. And so when you're looking at the finances, I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate it with cap rates and, and, God knows what, but I think it really comes down to a function of can we increase the rents in, in, our, other, in our, our other income? So obviously you can look at the other in the rents in the area by looking at comps and seeing, making sure you're comparing apples to apples by similar vintage unit size amenities. And so if you have a delta in which you can increase rents even higher, great, you can prove that business model. Another thing I think we, you can look at is looking at other income as a viable option. We generally get 8 to 12% of our total income from other income. So it's super important that when you're looking at the value add strategy by charging pet fees, move-in fees instead of security deposits, all of these uh, rubs, you name it, there's a ton of fees out there that you can charge that are, could be in your market. So make sure you assess your market as mentioned above, but it's income could be from rents or other income and then finance. And then the other way you could save money is through expenses, uh, reducing expenses. So one I've seen a lot is a ton of money spent on administrative. We purchased a property that had $30,000 a year in marketing that was for a billboard. And I, and, and this was 2019, not, the, not the 1970s or sixties, but it's just important that you make sure you understand is the property using the right efficient amount of funds to execute the business plan. So instead of that $30,000 billboard, we reduce that drastically so we can use apartments.com, Facebook marketplace, et cetera. So, uh, making sure you can reduce expenses. And also it's important through utilities. I've seen anything that has a thousand dollars or more in utilities, generally you have leaks or issues. So going back to that property, is this old, is this property older? Are the utilities really high? Where are the leaks? 
And so if you spent your renovation money on those to fix it, you can reduce ex your expenses as well. Uh, you generally can't reduce your taxes. You can fight them, but generally as the property sells, the, the, the local jurisdictions can understand. So don't try to do it through taxes or insurance because insurance is going up very greatly. So really important that you have this funnel every single time when you're looking at a deal. Make sure you're growing markets, generally with population growth, job growth. The sub-market, really making sure that you're in close to jobs with median income over 40,000. Properties, we're generally targeting 1970s and newer, 20 plus units uh, in those growing markets. And finances, just making sure you have the ability to increase rents, increase other income, or reduce expenses. So make sure you like and comments uh, if you got any value from this video. If you have any, uh, please subscribe as well. And if you have any questions on real estate, business, or evaluating deals, put them in the comments and happy to make other videos going forward. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.